Okay, this is task seven, brake pad replacement, where we're going to be removing the caliper and the pads. And it's similar to six if you've just done six, unless you've started with seven, this is all brand new. But if you've done six, this is pretty familiar. Um, this is going to be on another um, caliper assembly that's going to be on the bench, but I'm just going to demonstrate it here uh, to show you how it's done. Um, all we have to do is go ahead and remove our sliding pins. Go ahead and take those out. Now the, uh, the one that you're going to be doing is not going to be on here. It's going to be on a bench. It's on a bench, but it's a little bit different than this. And that the caliper is bolted to a bracket here, and then the bracket is bolted to the knuckle. Okay, This is a one-piece bracket knuckle. Um, but you're going to have to unbolt the bracket as well um, for the other piece. So just kind of note that. Okay. Now, go this part, all this does is just pull straight out from the top. Um, we don't want to let this hang here because we don't want to damage this hose. So we, we want to make sure that we hang this up. I'm just going to place this over here so it's resting like this. And that's going to be as, be as far as disassembling this. Um, we want to check our brake pad thickness right here. We want to see how thick our pads are. Um, go ahead and take these out. Again, this type. And they're all a little different. This type have this little spring right here. You have to lift it up slightly. Need three hands. And then this slides out. Okay. I want you to note the thickness of the pads. What kind of condition they're in. Okay, and then we can go ahead and set this off to the side here so we don't have any stress on this hose. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and check our runout and our parallelism. But before we do that, I also want you to check how thick the rotor is. Okay, and again, we're going to be using our micrometer here, which micrometer, we're going to go this way. Okay. Put your micrometer on here, go ahead and take that measurement, and note that on your lab packet, whatever that measurement is. And then we need to compare our brake thickness to what's in our what's in our reference book and see if we're we're good, if it's still within specs, or if it's too small and we're out of specs. And so we're gonna make a note on our lab packet about that. Okay. But we're gonna go ahead and set this up for showing you how to do um, the out of par or a parallelism measurement and out of round measurement as well. And we're going to demonstrate that in just a second. So let me get that set up. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that this isn't going to move. And what we do is you just pull this back a little bit, maybe just an eighth of an inch, and we make sure that our needle here isn't going to move on us. And it's stay staying right between... Uh, I'm going to turn this a little bit. We're going to zero this out. Very, do it very gently because if you touch this, um, you can actually move the arm and then you have to re readjust everything. So we're just going to check this. Just dial that back a little more. And then I'm going to check it one more time. Okay, it's staying right on zero or right below zero. I'm just going to go like this and try it one more time. That's good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is actually spin the rotor and watch my dial here. So it's going from zero up to one and going back down to zero and one. Oh, that went to two. Well, and zero is going a little lower. One. So we have run out of approximately one thousandth of an inch that it's moving. It's going from zero back to one, back to zero, back to one. So our spec, or what we're getting, is about one thousandth of an inch in run out. Right? How much is moving in and out and in and out and in and out. It's about one thousandth of an inch. That's point zero zero one. So we want to note that in our lab packet. Uh, the other thing we want to do, I'm just going to loosen this and get it out of the way since we took that measurement. The other thing we want to do is use our micrometer. Go ahead and open this up. Take 
takes a little time here. But I'm going to go ahead and measure it in about four spots. So I'm just twisting it by the barrel here. Again, I don't turn this to crank it down. And I want to check what my measurement is. And you want to go down about at least a quarter of an inch below the top surface of the rotor, or the, the outer diameter of the rotor. Go in about a quarter of an inch. And I'm measuring about, let's see, 8, and then I'm at the 50 plus 17. So I'm at about 8.867 of an inch, 0.867. So I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to turn this about 90 degrees. I'm going to measure it again. I'm about the same. And again, I'm using this the wrong way. I want to just turn the barrel right here, so the ratchet. And it stops at 0 0.867 again. Loosen it. Turn it again. And I'm at 0.867 again. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, you're not going to be doing it on this. You're going to be doing it on another rotor. So it may have some out of parallelism. Um, you may not get the same number here all the time. Okay, and that's fine. We just want to note what you get and see if it's parallel or if it's not parallel. Okay, and you're just going to note that in your packet as well. Uh, you also will have some information as far as what the spec specification should be or what the range is, and you're going to need to note that here as well. Okay. Um, you have two columns here for the right and left as far as what you measured. I'm only going to require you to, you to do uh, one side, so just use one column. We're not going to be doing two columns unless you have a lot of free time. Um, we're just going to be doing one rotor, and that's it. So you're going to need to look up the specs in our reference book and then measure one rotor or one wheel assembly with the, with the disc brakes on the bench. Okay. So once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and remove the um, calipers here. I don't, you can't see them. Let me zoom out. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove the calipers here and inspect the piston and the pads. Make sure they're good. So let me swing this back up. Okay, so we did our parallelism measurement and our out of round measurement. And we got that done. Um, now we want to go ahead and reassemble this. Uh, but before you reassemble this, you need to come and get me. And we're going to do a little something to uh, make this more realistic. But I do not want you moving on to the next step where you're installing these brake pads back on the car until you've come and seen me and I've come over and helped you out. I need to do one thing to your module in order to make it more effective. Okay. Um, what we have here... If these were old packs, our piston here would be sticking out slightly. You can see this is it's moved out a little bit. So what we have to do is actually push this piston back in. Um, the way the easiest way to do this is to take your old pad that you have, put that here, get a C clamp, put that between the pist the back of the caliper in your pad and go ahead and turn this and that will push the piston back in to the caliper like this. Um, do it slowly please. Okay, nice and easy. You don't need to do this real fast. You can damage the master cylinder if you really crank this in. And once you're you're almost there, I don't need this pushed all the way in. I just need it close and that should be fine. Okay, just a little bit of pressure is all it takes. Don't need a lot. So that's pushed in. Um, when I do reassemble this on an actual car, I want to make sure, again, that these surfaces are clean. I don't have any brake dust or dirt down here or here on my piston. Um, on this, you can, well, let's see, I got one. On this, the backing here, you can see I've got this gray looking material. That's called anti-seize. I want to put that on anywhere on the pad where I've got metal to metal contact. So right where the backing plate hits the caliper right here, I want to make sure I have some of that on there. So I'm not going to have you put that on or else it's going to be a big mess. But just know that we want to use something like anti-seize um, wherever we have metal to metal contact. But I just did something wrong. Tell me what that is in your notes. What goes on first? 
Okay. What we need to do is actually put this one on last. And we're going to put the one that goes to the inside here, right? We've got this big guy right here. This is going to go in first. It's going to go inside our piston. And then this is going to go to the outside. This is just snaps off. Now, again, on this particular model, we've got these little pins. Make sure they're pushed all the way in here and here when you put this back on. Um, this one we start at the bottom. You get it in place. Kind of look at what's going on down here. And then we push in. Sometimes our pin sliding guides get in the way. So now we're good. And we're going to go ahead and put our pins back in. Now if you've got the bracket, you got to install that bracket first before you put your caliper on. Okay. Go ahead and install your bracket. Go ahead after you get your bracket um, in. I want you to find the torque specs for the bracket to the knuckle and then the caliper to the bracket. Um, the bracket to the knuckle would typically be a lot higher number as far as torque and then the caliper to that bracket will usually be a lower number. Um, I want both those numbers on your lab packet, please. Okay. So go ahead and just snug this down. I'm actually going to give you a torque wrench, and I want you to torque each one of these down to the proper torque. I'm just going to do this for right now. And the last thing I want you to do is, again, I want you to note what the torque specs for the, our wheel lugs are, and go ahead and note that down in your notes as well. Um, after that, the only last thing we need to do is check our master cylinder. Um, if you're on a car, if you're not, don't worry about it. Um, but also come and get me because I need to set up the lab for the next group to come through. Um, so make sure you come and see me when you're ready to put this back together. And you come and see me at the end of the lab so I can get this set for the next lab as well. There's a couple things I need to do to get it ready. So once you get those done, um, you're done. I'll sign you off and you're on to the next lab for the next day.